O virgin of virgins, how shall this be? For neither before thee was any like thee, nor shall there be any after. Daughters of Jerusalem, why marvel ye at me? The thing which ye behold is a divine mystery. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. Thank you for joining us for the service of morning prayer on Monday, the 23rd of December. As we hear the Psalms and Scriptures and reflect on the tension between those parts of the service that never change and the ones that change with the seasons and even day by day, I hope you may find peace and stillness, a sense of tradition balanced with a sense of how God still speaks and works in our lives even now. Let's take a moment to calm ourselves and find stillness. The service of morning prayer begins on page four in the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our King and Saviour draweth nigh. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our King and Saviour draweth nigh. O come, let us worship. The psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 93 and 96, as found on pages 450 and 453. The Lord is King, and hath put on glorious apparel. The Lord hath put on his apparel, and girded himself with strength. He hath made the round world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began hath thy throne been established. Thou art from everlasting. The floods have lift up, O Lord. The floods have lift up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. Mightier than the roar of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, The Lord who dwelleth on high is mighty. 
Thy testimonies, O Lord, are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house forever. O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the whole earth. Sing unto the Lord and praise his name. Be telling of his salvation from day to day. Declare his honor among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and cannot worthily be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the peoples, they are but idols. But it is the Lord that made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the peoples. Ascribe unto the Lord glory and power. Give unto the Lord the honor due unto his name. Bring presents and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. He hath made the round world so fast that it cannot be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea make a noise and all that is therein. Then let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 33rd chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will behold a land that stretches afar. Your mind will muse on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people, the people of an obscure speech which you cannot comprehend, stammering in a tongue which you cannot understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feasts. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor stately ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our ruler, the Lord is our king. He will save us. Here endeth the first lesson. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despised thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. 
violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter beginning at the 57th verse. Now the time came for Elizabeth to be delivered, and she gave birth to a son. And her neighbors and kinsfolk heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would have named him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, Not so, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your kindred is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all marveled. And immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, blessing God. And fear came on all their neighbors. And all these things were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Raise up, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are sore let and hindered in running the race that is set before us, thy bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hast safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy Spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. I invite your prayers at this time for all those who are particularly in need of our prayer, those who have asked us to pray for them, and those whom the Spirit of God has put into our hearts to pray for. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.